Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I am here with this important topic that is microscopy. Uh, in this presentation I will discuss about the introduction of microscopy, uh, what is microscope and how it works, its historical background and various terms related to microscopy. Then I will discuss about the light microscopy and its working principle, then types of light microscopes. So these are the topics that I will try to cover in this presentation. So let's start. So firstly, what is microscopy? This word is derived from a Greek word, micros, which means small, and scopio means to view. So the device which is used to view the small objects which are not visible to the naked eye. Objects smaller than 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 millimeters are not visible with the naked eye. So uh, to observe these objects, we require this uh, device or instrument which is known as microscope. So to, to view these objects, organisms or things, we require this instrument that is known as microscope. All microscopes involve some optical phenomena like we have diffraction, reflection, refraction of light beams that interacts with the specimen. So this device works on these principles. There are main th mainly three types of microscopy that is optical microscopy, electron microscopy and scanning probe mi microscopy that I will discuss one by one in detail in upcoming lectures. So this is the animated image which shows different objects which are visible to the naked eye or we require light microscopes or advanced microscope that is electron microscope like we have height of five year old child, width of hand width of finger so these are the objects that can be there are visible with naked eye to observe some smaller objects like we have to observe thickness of human hair size of red blood cell or size of bacterium we require this microscopy that is known as light microscope to observe very extremely small or ultra microscopic of uh, biomolecules subcellular particles atoms uh, we require this advanced machine that is known as electron microscope it can observe a uh, observe an object of a size that is 0 0.1 nanometers so this is the one of the most advanced type of microscope uh, which helps in magnification of objects up to a 50 uh, lakh times next comes historical background which is related to microscopy so firstly in 1284 there was a person named as salvino di armati uh, perhaps was the first who invented the wearable eyeglasses in italy so he was the first person that is Salvino di Armatre or Armiti who uh, manufactured or invented the first eyeglasses which are wearable eyeglasses. So this is the photograph of this first device. The next in 1590 Zacharias Jensen and his father Hans Lippershey, a Dutch spectacle makers assembled the first primitive microscope with a magnification of 3x to 9x. So, the first microscope, the uh, simplest microscope, hai, this was invented by these two persons, that is Zacharias Jensen and Hans Lippershey. In 1655, Robert Hooke who used a microscope to describe the cell, and he was uh, the first person to observe the cell. Then, uh, in 1667, Robert Hooke published his work, that is Micrographia this book micrographia that containing his studies using microscope so uh, he was able to do these studies with the help of this device that is my microscope in 1675 Anton van de van Hoek who was the first person to observe living cell so the first living cells were observed by this person Anton van de van Hoek who used microscope with one lens to observe any organisms so this was the simplest uh, a microscope which was invented by Anton van Leeuwenhoek and observed the first living cells like bacteria, sperm cells, blood cells. So he was the first person who observed living cell under this device, simple microscope. In 1774, there was a person named as Benjamin Martin who developed color corrected lenses for microscope. Then in 1830, Joseph Jackson Lister who reported that when weak lenses are used together at various distances they can produce more clear magnification so he was the first person to observe this thing uh, this is the photograph of joseph jackson lister next in 1878 ernest abe uh, who proposed a mathematical theory linking resolution of a microscope to the light wavelength this is ernest abe then in 1881 kajal et al 
dwelt the staining methods to improve the visibility of object under microscope they were he was a uh, this uh, kajal and his co-worker were the first to use staining methods to improve the visibility of objects under microscope the next day in 1886 just designed a series of glass lenses to resolve the objects at theoretical limit of visible light. In 1931, Max Noll and Ernest Ruska at the Berlin dwelt the first electron microscope. And for this work, Ernest Ruska was awarded Nobel Prize in Physics in 1986 for his researches on electron microscopy. So this is the most advanced type of microscopic device that was invented by Max Noll and Ernest Ruska. In 1932, Fritz Zernike invented a phase contrast microscope, which can be used to study transparent biological materials. So this microscopic device is used to observe some transparent biological materials inside the cell. So in this image, we can see here, this is the normal image. This is the uh, phase contrast microscopic image. So there is a huge difference between these two images. So to observe the transparent biological samples, we use this phase contrast microscope. In 1945, Kuhn's develops the first fluorescence microscope. So Kuhn was the first Kuhn's was the first person to uh, invent this fluorescence microscope in which we use one chemical device, uh, chemical substance that is known as fluorophore, uh, which emit light and gives the image under this device that is fluorescence microscope. In 1981, Allen and Inou developed the video enhanced contrast microscopy. Then 18, in 1981, Gerd Binning and Heinrich Rohrer invented the scanning tunneling microscope, which made the recording of three dimensional images of specimen possible. So these are the scientists which are related to microscopy. Next is microscope. This is an instrument which is uh, which consists of lens or combination of lenses and uh, magnify the minute objects. So an optical instrument consisting of lenses, lens or combination of lenses for making enlarged images of minute object. So as a device, just say um, chote minute objects ko magnify ke dekh sakte hain, that device is known as microscope. An optical or light microscope uses glass lenses and visible spectrum light, while the electron microscope uses an electron beam. So this is the difference in place of visible light and electromagnetic lenses in place of glass lenses. So this is the difference between electron microscopy and simple light microscopy. So this is the, the, this is the image which shows pollen grains under the microscope. So these are very small minute objects. So the, that can be enlarged under this simple microscope or compound microscope. Next comes some terms which are related to microscopy. The first is magnification power. So this is simply magnification means to zoom the image. Just say we virtually the size image ka bahut bada dikhta as compared to its original size. So the ability to make small objects to virtually look larger than their actual size. This is known as magnification. Uh, for this magnification we use is combination of powers of different lenses. So we use the powers of ocular lens that is also known as eyepiece. So the eyepiece hai. And second lens is the objective lens. So in dono lenses ki powers ko use kiya to magnify this object. So if we want to calculate it, so magnification of microscope is equal to virtual size of object under a microscope. Jo hume object dikhai de raha under microscope divided by the actual size of object. So we can calculate the magnification power of a microscope. For example, if we are using a lens combination of 10x and 100x, that is 10x is uh, the magnification of eyepiece, suppose, and 100x is the uh, magnification power of objective lens. So it's a combination of both these lenses. So the magnification of this microscope will be approximately equal to 1000x. So this is the magnification power of this um, microscope. So similarly, we can make different combinations of lenses that can be used to obtain different magnification levels. So, um, different magnification levels ko obtain kar sakte by the combination of these two lenses that is eyepiece and objective lens. So, this is the image that shows total magnifications of different combinations. For example, if we have objective lens, objective lens of uh, 4x magnification and uh, it is in, used in combination with eyepiece of 10x. So, we will, uh, we will get an, a magnification of 40x. 
So this is just multiplication of these two lenses. Then second, if we are using an objective lens of 10x and eyepiece of 10x, so the uh, magnification of the object will be 100x. Similarly, if we are using the objective lens of 40x and the eyepiece of 10x, the magnification that we get and uh, that is equal to 400x. So these are different combinations that we can use to obtain the different magnifications of the object. Again, this is a table that shows different magnifications uh, uh, that we get in different combinations of lenses. So firstly, magnification. So total magnification is how large the specimen appears under microscope. So total magnification is equal to eyepiece into objective lens. So in the combination, the powers ko use. Kya hai. Uh, for example, objective lens selected that is scanning, that is magnification of objective lens is 4x that I have already discussed, magnification of eyepiece is 10x. So we will get the total magnification of 40x. Then suppose at low power, that is 10x magnification of the objective lens and 10x magnification power of this eyepiece, we will get the total magnification of 100x. Then again, higher power, if we are using the objective lens of 40x and eyepiece of 10x, then we'll get the total magnification of 400x. So this is how the next important term is numerical aperture. It is one of the most important characteristic feature which determine the performance of an objective lens. So it is the most important factor in defining the performance characteristics of an objective lens. So objective lens ki performance hai, that is decided by this uh, term that is numerical aperture. So mathematically numerical aperture is equal to n into sine alpha where this n is the refractive index to so n hai, that represents the refractive index of the various medium which is present between the specimen and the objective lens. So iske beech mein jo present hai, iske, iska jo refractive index hai, that is rendered by n of the medium between the specimen and the objective at d line. So this alpha that is uh, equals that is equal to the half the cone angle of light emitted from the condenser and accepted by the objective so this alpha represents this cone angle jo condenser emit karta hai light and that is received by this lens that is objective lens so this is equals to the half the cone angle ye jo cone angle hai iska jo half angle that is uh, this uh, alpha for a dry objective lens, the value of n is equal to 1, that is air. If there is nothing in between the specimen and objective lens, so the value of refractive index is 1. And for a typical oil emulsion, immersion, objective lens, the uh, value of refractive index ki, that is 1.515 for immersion oil. And for water immersion, jo objective lens, agar hum objective lens or uh, condenser ke beech mein, uh, jo medium hai, if it is water only, then the value of refractive index is 1.6, 1.360. That is for water at 38 degrees Celsius. So what it indicates basically, jo numerical aperture ki value hai, higher the numerical aperture becomes higher the resolving power. So utni hi zada resolving power hogi of the objective lens. When the resolving power is defined as the uh, when the resolving power is defined as the power to recognize two points so we will discuss this term in detail the higher the numerical aperture and the brighter the image acquired so utni hi bright image banti hai jitni hi higher numerical aperture hota hai objective ka lens ka so utni hi achhi image banti hai microscope ke so this is all about this term that is numerical aperture these are the values of numerical aperture values for some uh, objective lenses that is for 4x its value is 0.1 for 10x uh, its value is 0.25 for 40x its value is 0.65 and for 100x its value is 1.25 so these are the values of uh, numerical apertures for different uh, uh, objective lenses of different magnifications Next term is resolving power. So this uh, term is used uh, for the microscope where uh, it can distinguish between the two points. 
सो जो इमेज है उसके बीच में जो दो पॉइंट्स हैं उनको जो डिफ्रेंशिएट करने की जो पावर है दैट इज कॉल्ड रिजॉल्विंग पावर दिस इमेज वी कैन सी हियर दिस दिस इमेज देर इज नो सेपरेशन ऑफ टू पॉइंट्स हियर इनिशिएशन ऑफ सेपरेशन ऑफ टू पॉइंट स्टार्ट एंड इन दिस थर्ड इमेज दिस वन यहाँ पे जो दो पॉइंट्स है दे आर डिफ्रेंशियबल सो द एबिलिटी टू डिस्टिंग्विश बिटवीन टू क्लोजली प्लेस्ड पॉइंट्स जो दो क्लोजली प्लेस पॉइंट्स हैं और ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं बाय एन ऑप्टिकल डिवाइस एंड टू प्रोड्यूस देयर इमेजेस इज नॉन एज रिजॉल्विंग पावर ऑफ दैट ऑप्टिकल डिवाइस एंड इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन सर्टेन फैक्टर्स लाइक फर्स्टली द वेव लेंथ ऑफ द इलूमिनेटिंग एजेंट तो जो वेव लेंथ है इलूमिनेटिंग एजेंट की मीन्स द सोर्स ऑफ लाइट एंड द न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर ऑफ द ऑब्जेक्टिव लेंथ सो दो चीज़ें हैं जिन पर यह डिपेंड करता है फर्स्ट वन इज द वेव लेंथ ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर एंड सेकेंड वन इज द न्यूमेरिकल अपर्चर दैट आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस इन प्रीवियस लाइट The resolution is the minimum distance between two points. So then next is resolution. So it is the minimum distance between two points or different objects in an image that can be distinguished. That can be distinguished. जिसे हम differentiate कर सकते हैं उन दो points जो के बीच में जो distance है that minimum distance is known as resolution. So it is also known as minimum resolvable distance. इसे हम इस second term से भी जानते हैं that is minimum resolvable distance. and the resolving power is the inverse of the distance between two points jo resolving power hoti hai wo hoti hai inverse of the distance between two points it means lesser is the uh, distance between two points greater will the resolving power or objects that can be resolved so greater is the resolving power the smaller is the minimum distance between the two points so these two factors works inversely that can be distinguished This can be represented by using Abbe's uh, Abbe's equation. Uh, this equation was given by Ernest Abbe in 18 1873 as follows. So, what this equation is all about? So, here, uh, this according to this Abbe's equation, delta d is equal to lambda by 2n sine theta. Here. The resolving power, that is resolving power, it is equal to this resolving power is equal to. If we solve this equation, it is one by d delta d and two n sine theta divided by lambda. So this is the resolving power according to Abbe's equation. So here we can see with the help of this image. So the resolving power is equal to 2n sine theta divided by lambda. Here, these di different uh, terms that we have used here, these different signs. So resolving power uh, is equal to 2n sine theta divided by lambda. Here, lambda is the wavelength of light used to illuminate the object. So this is the wavelength of illuminating of ob uh, object light. Here, n that I have already discussed. It represents the refractive index of the medium between objective lens and the condenser. Or we can say the specimen, where theta is the angle. So this is the Abbe's equation, and the resolving power is equal to two n. Limit of resolution. This was ex explained by Ernest Carl Abbe in 1873. It is uh, explained with the help of this equation that is known as d is equal to lambda by two n sine alpha sine. Uh, we can write it sine theta. That is angle that I will explain. Abbe proposed that the smallest resolvable distance between two points uh, by using a conventional microscope may never be smaller than half the wavelength of the imaging light jo imaging light hai uski wavelength ka jo half se kam ye do points ke bich mein distance nahi hoga that was proposed by carl ernest ave later on he proved that as a result of diffraction diffraction ke result se imaging resolution was limited to the half of the wavelength और इसको हम मॉडिफाई कर सकते हैं बाय रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स बाय चेंजिंग रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ द मीडियम एंड द एंगल और थीटा ऑफ द कोन ऑफ द फोकस लाइट सो बाय मॉडिफाइंग दीज टू थिंग्स दैट इज रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स एंड एंगल थीटा वी कैन इंक्रीज और डिक्रीज द रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ द इमेज एंड इट इज एक्सप्लेन विद द हेल्प ऑफ एवेज इक्वेशन वेर एवेज इक्वेशन इज इक्वल टू दैर इज डी दैर इज डिस्टेंस बिटवीन टू पॉइंट इज इक्वल टू लैमडा दैर इज द वेब लेंथ ऑफ इलिमिनेटिंग लाइट Divided by two n sine theta or sine alpha. So this is average equation. Here n small n is equal to refractive index of the medium, and this 
theta is the angle of numerical aperture half the angle of the numerical aperture it can be modified as as we know that this n a that is numerical aperture is equal to n sine theta so we can modify this equation as d is equal to lambda by 2n a so this equation is known as a base equation so this a base equation is equal to d is equal to lambda by 2n sine alpha or sine theta here microscopy resolution is equal to resolving power the smallest distance that is d at which two objects can be successfully distinguished uh, and resolution that is d this uh, distance between two points can be written as 0 0.61 into lambda binomial aperture that i will explain in the next slide that this is all this uh, uh, equation was refined by uh, Rayleigh lord Rayleigh. here lambda is the wavelength of the illuminating light and is the numerical aperture as we know that this numerical aperture's value is equal to n sine theta or sine alpha so that i have already next this abyss equation was refined by lord Rayleigh in, in 1896 uh, the limit of resolution this limit of resolution by using this Rayleigh's formula is expressed as r is equal to 0 0.61 lambda divided by n a so this equation is modified by uh, this Lord Rayleigh here this lambda represents the wavelength of the light that is approximately 0 0.53 to 0 0.55 micrometers and n a is numerical aperture and its value is uh that we have already that i've already discussed that n is equal to n sine theta this is the value of this numerical aperture and this is the angle that is the half of the angle of this cone or light that is focused by condenser so n a is equal to n sine theta so this equation can be written as this r is equal to 0 0.61 lambda divided by n sine theta so this is the modified equation to explain the limit of resolution by lord Rayleigh. here n is is, is the refractive index of the medium so this medium which is present between the specimen and the objective that is n that is refractive index and theta is this angle half the angular width of the cone this is the half the ang half the angular width of the cone of rays collected by objective lens so this is all about this limit of resolution Next is light microscopy. As the name indicates, light microscopy, this is a device that uses visible light to observe fine detail of the microscopic objects. And this device creates a magnified image through the use of a series of glass lenses. So, we use a combination of lenses use karte hai to magnify the image. These lenses first focus a beam of light onto or through an object, and then through the objective lens and then ocular lens to magnify the image formed and then we will get this magnified image through this eyepiece so you, it uses different combination of lenses in majority of the microscope the image is viewed directly through the lens that is known as eyepiece or ocular lens it may be monocular means it uh, the image can be seen with the help of single eye or it can be binocular the device in which there are two eye pieces so the ocular lenses here th this ocular lens that is eyepiece it acts as a secondary lens in the form of a magnifying glass to observe the projected image inside the body of a microscope So ye ek tarah se secondary lens ki tarah kaam karta hai jisse hame magnified jo image hai wo uh, dikhai deti hai an approximate magnification produced by light microscope is the multiplication of the objective magnification and the ocular magnification that uh, I have already discussed in previous slide. So this is the objective lens and the combination of this ocular lens. The both of these lenses magnification gives the total magnification of that microscopic object. Next is principle of light microscopy. So this light microscopy is based on the principle of differential absorption by of visible light by the specimen. So there is a differential absorption of visible light by the specimen and it works on this principle. Uh, then uh, this light microscopy 
or light microscope uses a combination of lenses to magnify the microscopic object and the magnification of this small object depends upon the ability of lenses to bend light and focus it on the specimen so this ability of lenses which finally forms the image and uh, this magnification depends upon this factor the light rays bend at an angle at the interface when passing from one medium to another causing refraction which depends upon the refractive index of the medium so refractive index as i have already discussed there are different values of refractive index for different mediums so the direction and magnitude of bending light depends upon the refractive indexes of two mediums that forms the interface so to condenser or specimen uh, sorry to specimen or objective ke beech mein jo medium present hota hai wo decide karta hai uh, direction and magnitude of bending light so a medium with lower refractive index as a medium just ka lower refractive index so like we have glass or uh, air glass to air it enhances light penetration and making the light bend away from the normal on the other hand light passing through a medium with higher refractive index for example air to glass shows uh, slows down the light penetration and bends it to down towards the normal to usme jo light hai wo move karti hai towards the normal a specific point at which the lens focuses the light is known as focal point as a point is pe light focus hoti hai that is known as focal point so the distance from the center of the lens and the focal point is known as focal length so jo distance hota hai from the center of lens to the focal point is known as focal length ise kaha jata hai focal length and the power of a lens is inversely proportional to the focal length jo power hai lens ki that is inversely proportional to the focal length that is less the focal length of a lens more is the magnification of the and more the focal length less is the magnification of that lens so lesser is the focal length more is the uh power of that lens uh, greater is the uh focal length lesser is the magnification of that lens so it works inversely so less the focal length of a lens more the magnification uh, and more the focal length less is the magnification of that lens the working distance between the objective lens and specimen is inversely proportional to the power of the lenses so the distance hota hai between objective lens this is the objective lens or जो स्पेसिमन है लाइक वी हैव दिस स्पेसिमन इसके बीच में जो डिस्टेंस है दिस वर्किंग डिस्टेंस इट इज अगेन इनवर्सली पोर्शन टू द पावर ऑफ लेंस ये भी पावर ऑफ लेंस के इनवर्सली पोर्शन होता है अ वर्चुअल इमेज फॉर्म्ड एंड मैग्नीफाइड बाय ऑक्यूलर लेंसेस इन अ कंपाउंड लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप इज ऑलवेज इन्वर्टेड एक्सेप्ट इन डिसेक्टिंग माइक्रोस्कोप तो जो इमेज बनती है वर्चुअल इमेज जो कि ऑक्यूलर लेंस पे बनती है दिस वन दैट इज अल आई पीस इसमें इन कंपाउंड माइक्रोस्कोप ये हमेशा होती है इनवर्टेड एक्सेप्ट इन डिसेक्टिंग माइक्रोस्कोप डिसेक्टिंग माइक्रोस्कोप एक एक्सेप्शन है देन देर आर टू वैल्यूज दैर इज एफ नॉट विच इज द दिस वैल्यू इज फॉर ऑब्जेक्टिव लेंथ ऑब्जेक्टिव लेंस एंड देन नेक्स्ट इज एफ ई दैर इज द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस आई पीस सो एफ नॉट एंड एफ ई इन दिस फिगर रिप्रेजेंट द फोकल लेंथ ऑफ ऑब्जेक्टिव लेंस एंड आई पीस इज रेस्पेक्टिवली so we have values for focal length of this uh, f o is for focal length of the objective lens and f e is the focal length of this ip so this is the ocular lens or e hai iski jo value hai focal length that is represented by f e next we have different types of light or optical microscopes and the list of these there are different variants of light or optical microscope and some of them are listed below like we have firstly dissecting microscope jo ki large objects ko dekhne ke liye use hota hai this is known as uh, dissecting microscope then we have stereo microscope this is the stereo microscope then next is compound or bri a bright field light mi microscope that is a most commonly used microscope in different institutions laboratories this is the compound microscope then next is phase contrast light microscope जो कि मोस्टली जो ट्रांसपेरेंट लिविंग ऑब्जेक्ट्स हैं उन्हें देखने के लिए यूज किया जाता है नेक्स्ट इज फ्लोरिसेंस लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप नेक्स्ट वी हैव कन्फोकल माइक्रोस्कोपी देन डार्क फील्ड लाइट माइक्रोस्कोप एंड डिफरेंशियल इंटरफेस इंटरफेरेंस कॉन्ट्रास्ट माइक्रोस्कोपी देन वी हैव पोलराइजिंग माइक्रोस्कोप 
then we have inverted microscopes. So there are different types of microscopes, which are the types of light or optical microscope that are used in studying various microscopic objects. This was all about for our today's discussion about microscopy. Uh, in next presentation, I will discuss about dissection microscopy and compound microscopy. Hope you will get uh, some idea from this presentation. If you have any questions, queries, and any suggestions, you can give it in comment section. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.